I think so too. I've been this all my life. <laughs> <laughs> my whole life. Anyway, hi, fellas. How you doing? How are you, boss? How's your brother? Good? Yeah, he's excellent. You have a good relationship with him, right? With Jake? Yeah. Yeah, we do now. But it's not always been like that. It's always been, yeah, I can imagine. Right, it's, it's my brother. It's good. Yeah, it's good. It's good. It's Taylor good. Tyson, we got it. Yeah, right? Who you got? Uh, what, is it gonna, what is that going to be? November. It got rescheduled. Well, look, Mike was fantastic, but, you know, Mike's a little older now. Yeah. And you guys can fight. Yeah. We'll talk about that, but you guys can really fight, legitimately fight. Thank you, sir. At first I said, I, you know, it's so amazing, because I always thought like a UFC guy or a top, you know, even contender would be able to win at 75 years old. You think? But it doesn't work that way. Right? Yeah, yeah. The clock is still the clock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I figured that out with Floyd as well. Yeah, how about that, right? I don't know. I mean, it was, <laughs> I mean, it was even. Yeah, which, you which shouldn't make... You would have thought he would have won that fight. That's what I thought. That was your yeah. Some right? people yeah. still think he did win that you guys. Oh, no way. Yeah. We got gifts. Oh, nice. Sell for a lot of money to say. Oh, no way. <laughs> Oh wow, merch, for real, for real. This is so weird. Emmy says it's gotta be a wild experience. This has got to be a wild experience. <laughs> oh, thank you, President. Yeah, you just split it up. Here's oh, amazing. Here. Yes, this is a- uh, is, uh, is this your mugshot? This is, yeah, can you believe it? <laughs> no way, you're a gangster. This is what we're reduced to. <laughs> In that no place. way. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, that's kind of funny. I know some people really hate this about Trump. I don't really look at criminals like they're less than people, but I do think this type of criminality is not, I think, appropriate for the presidency. So I can see why people are very upset about it, but some part of my 12 year old boy thinks this is pretty funny to put your own mugshot on merch. But I know, I know it's offensive, but it's also so so funny. See, that's a problem. I'm a 12 year old child. I'm a boy. And the boy brain, this is funny. But the adult, like, serious brain is like, no, this is inappropriate. Oh, should, should we put them on now? Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's, that's, crazy. that's amazing. And it sells. Well, Elvis had one. Frank Sinatra had one. True. This shirt. But we've eclipsed oh. them. <laughs> we don't love criminals because we're, as Americans, we're pretty anti authority. But, like, we are anti authority, but also we only like the criminals we like. If we like them, we like them. A long time ago, we were eclipsed them. <laughs> this is crazy. It's pretty cool. Isn't it cool? I have to be honest. I'm jealous. It's actually, you know. I'm not sure if I love it or not, but no, no, it's it good. is what it is. It, it, it happened that uh, I might as well monetize it. Well, Mr. President, people surely love it. They love the picture. They rallied behind it. They, uh, they're rallying behind you now. Well, they more are. than ever. And you know, we had uh, the biggest fundraising, I think ever for any candidate ever anywhere in the world in the last uh, eight or nine days. Again, yeah. hundreds of millions of dollars and too bad it couldn't have been done for other reasons, but they, they viewed the case as being so corrupt and so ridiculous. You know, every one of the legal pundits and, you know, they're great guys. Uh, when you look at Dershowitz, the whole group, you know, that whole group of people, uh, Andy McCarthy. Wait, okay, first of all, I love that they have Prime in front of an interview with the president. Is that Mike's book? It is, it's Mike's book. So first we have Mike's book, Trump merch, Prime merch. Honestly, this would be a crazy plug. They came out and they said, there's not even a case here. There's no case. And uh, when they saw the jury instructions, when they saw all the things that happened, they, and, and it's not like anybody's a friend of mine. Mark Levin is an example. They couldn't believe it so unfair you know it's a very unfair thing and because of that the fundraising numbers and the polls but the fundraising that's sort of like a poll anyway yeah, right? when yeah. you get right down to it but the fundraising numbers went uh, i don't think there's ever been that much money raised that quickly would you guys think less of me if i did an interview with trump because honestly i think i would but it would be so I think like, uh, I don't know how I would do it. Obviously, I'd never get the opportunity, but because I'm a hater, right? Like he, he wouldn't do an interview with a hater, you know? But if I did, I would want to talk to him, but not because I want to pwn him. You know, I'm not that kind of person. I'm not the person who wants to pwn my enemy. I don't believe in enemies. I don't have any enemies. Thank you. But I would love to talk to him. I think it would be interesting. 
You've become a martyr Hundreds of Hundreds of millions of dollars. Yeah, it's insane. Yeah. $140 million in May that you raised. Just 35 million in just hours after the verdict. Yeah, 58 yeah. million within a few hours. And that was in small donations, like $71, something average. Mikey with the super chat. Let's go. Says, I don't understand how we allow our elections to become a choice of the lesser of two evils every time, but it's comical at this point. I mean, I think all of life is comical. And I think that's why, again, my work wants to encourage people to leave the bubble if they feel suffocated by it because genuinely there are so many ways to live life so this narrative that is pushed by these bubbles this narrative that there's only one way to exist is just not true and so I recommend that if you are getting exhausted by the world like don't be of it because it's not the only way to exist you literally can turn it off you are going to die within 70 to maybe 80 years and it's like you can spend that time being plugged in but genuinely i think if less people were kind of plugged in to the bullshit the world would be better i think because people are plugged in it gets worse like think about a viral tiktok like this white woman who recently went viral on um, tiktok for saying the n-word she did that on purpose and now all of these progressives are uplifting her and showing her and that's what she wanted in the first place she literally wanted you to be upset and now you're making her famous. Now conservatives are hiring her and paying her money. So congratulations. You just allowed another crazy white lady to make money off you. And it's like, yeah, I pick and choose. Like, I'm going to pick and choose. Like, if I'm not, you know, I'm trying to make a bag too. But like, also, you know, you know, I, I don't like people like her the most. I think they're the most frustrating kinds of people, but I'm like, mm -mm. And over the over a period of a week, we even went to San Francisco. Now, not supposed to be, that's the belly of the beast, right? It's a Rare person. visit. But they had thousands of people on the street. It was so positive. And they raised $12 million, the, the tech guys, at one of the houses, David, fantastic people. And they they were like, uh, they gave me a lot of money. They, they've never been into doing that. And I think it helps that Biden is just so bad. He is so bad. He is the worst president in the history of our country. So that helps too. You should make a diss track on him. Yeah, we'll do something. Oh, yeah. We'll do something. <laughs> I actually wanted to start there. Um, Go ahead. Because one thing that I was, I, I just can't seem to wrap my head around it is, uh, you know, you, you, got, you got these felony convictions and, and, a, and a lot of them, like more than Al Capone, right? And, and, and there was an uprising and people showed you their support with their donations. And a lot of people are saying it, it, it points out that actually the unjust nature of, of America's justice system. So I, my question is like, if that is your belief, is if that is their belief, why do you have the desire to give your time and energy to a, a country or a system that's trying to take you down? So I ran twice, I did much better the second. So he can avoid doing prison time. Because if he becomes president, right, he gets to avoid prison time. Is that how it works? That's my understanding. Second time than the first time. And if I didn't, I wouldn't have done this. But we had it going like this country has never been going before. It was really good. Now it's really bad. The worst border in history. The worst inflation, I think, in history. I think the history of the country. The people are getting decimated by it. All very flex. You know, all something you can fix. You can fix it fast. Uh, we were energy independent. We we're going to be energy dominant very soon. All these things were happening. And then we had a terrible result in an election and it, what happened was disgraceful and we can't ever let it happen again but i you know we have a little expression it's right on that hat make america great again and we can do that make america great again and this guy is not going to do it this guy has destroyed our country uh when you allow him alone biden singularly destroyed destroyed america true what just him though Nobody else, absolutely nobody else, just Biden. Oh, 15, 16, 17, they have no idea with the gotaways. A uh, million people in coming out of jails, coming out of mental institutions, insane asylum. Uh, the insane asylums all over the world, the mental institutions, they're at the lowest levels. They've been at it for years. Uh, they're going to be totally empty. And uh, you have terrorists coming into our country. We're going to be paying a big price and we're going to solve the problem and we're going to solve it relatively quickly but we have other problems too with energy with uh, inflation uh, he's been a disaster as a president he's the worst president we've ever had sometimes man i really wish i could grift like this sometimes i can make so much money obviously it's like wrestling 
You think it's real, but it's fake, but it's kind of real. Like wrestling, you know how they say wrestling is fake? Well, the injury is real. So part of wrestling is real. You know what I mean? That's how life feels to me. It feels like life is performative, but it's real because the injuries are real. And that will always remind me to ground myself as much as possible because it is so performative and people really don't understand how ungrounded they are. Like the people putting conspiracies around about silicone fruit, like you're so ungrounded. But also it's my job to remember that that's not my business. You being ungrounded is not my business. News is he makes Jimmy Carter look brilliant by comparison. So Jimmy Carter is the only one that's happy with this. Well, look, I think that's why a lot of people are so obsessed with you, Mr. Trump, Mr. President Trump. Um, well, because you're already a billionaire, right? You, you, you are essentially serving these people and you don't have to be doing it. The president, no. being the president seems like a very hard job. You, you were at three meetings just before this. Sure. But, but I guess I'm asking like the desire to run an attempt to improve your country for these things you're saying yeah. becomes from what? Just the love of the well, country? Well, the people, I, I'll tell you, when you look at the people, when you look at the crowds, I did a, a rally in New Jersey. We had 107,000 people there. You saw that last week. Uh, we did one in the Bronx. We had 25,000 people. And this was in the South Bronx, which is known as a rough area. And it was like a love fest. Mm. There was not even like- To be fair, in order to get an interview with Trump, maybe you would have to play up his ego. Because again, he's not going to talk to haters. He's going to talk to people that are fans. He's going to talk to people that like help him move the vote. I mean, I know a lot of young men who do like Trump. They like his rebellious streak, which is interesting. This is, there's two types of rebellion. Progressives are rebellious and conservatives are rebellious. They're just rebellious in different ways, which makes the other- feel like you're so pro-government you love to be an authoritative monster on the world like oh the progressives want to force you to use pronouns and the conservatives want to ban you from being gay and everybody's like big on government but yet we're all rebels as i've bubble hopped throughout my life being raised conservative moving into progressivism i have never fundamentally seen a huge difference between groups in terms of what they think they're doing. They both think they're freedom. They both think they're tolerant. They both think they're, you know, pro-free speech. They both think they're anti-government. They both think of themselves as the same thing the other thinks of themselves. Like they're the same. The difference is how they play out, which you guys all know, right? That's the difference in politics. Everyone thinks they're doing good for the country. The question is, is which one is right? Probably a mixture of both or uh, mostly one side or it depends on which way you want the world to go. But this is always subjective based off the group of people who want the country to go in a particular direction. Obviously, in my ideal world, the Logan Pauls and the Mikes, no offense, and the Trumps would not be considered like upstanding citizens. They wouldn't be people of good character. But obviously, there's a bubble in which these people are people with good character. I don't think so. But also, it's not up to what Brittany thinks. So why is that? Why do I think when I look at Trump and I look at these people like these are not upstanding people and it's because they don't have overlap with my morals. We have overlap in how we convey in what words we use, but we don't follow through in the same way. We wouldn't do the same thing if faced with a problem and looking for a solution. And so that you usually want to hang out with people that kind of agree with the solution. And that itself is really difficult because not even within the same like label, do you agree with the solution? which is why it's all bubbles. So pick your bubbles wisely, or in my case, build your own bubble. Construct it. Everything is a construct anyways. You might as well make your own. Nobody even raised a voice of dissent. Mm -hmm. The whole place, it was like a big love fest. Nobody could believe it. You saw that three, four weeks ago. Mm -hmm. uh, there's tremendous, our country has tremendous potential, but it's going down the tubes. The fallopian tubes. So bad. And we can change it. We can change it quickly. We have a debate coming up. That'll be interesting. June that, 27th, be, yeah. hosted by one of your favorite television networks, CNN. Uh, well, they gave me the option. They said, uh, would you do it? And they didn't want to do it. He didn't want to do it. So they gave me everything. Fake Tapper and uh, lots of other people that were going to, you know, were involved uh, on CNN. They wanted it to be seated, which I didn't like. I said, we should stand. And I think we won that mm -hmm. point. But uh, I would have agreed to whatever I had. To Ooh, interesting. They all get to like, should we sit? Should we stand? Interesting. Obviously, if they stand, they can kind of see who looks more fragile when standing. They thought that I wouldn't do it because it's CNN, but I've done plenty of CNN. I did a town hall not so long ago with CNN that worked out well. But I think they'll be fair. I think they're going to try and be fair, I mean, as fair as they can be. Uh, but I think it's important for there to be a debate. So 
They said, you want to debate? Yep, I'll, I'll accept. You don't even have to tell me. Then they said CNN. They said, you know, Trump looks pretty good, minus his orange. But like, if you look at his face, has Trump, I don't think Trump has ever had a facelift. He looks pretty good, actually. It's not bad. Let's see what happens. I used to get along with Jake Tapper. Mm. We'll see what happens, but mm. it doesn't matter. Whatever it is, it is. That sentiment that CNN might be fair to you. They might be. Is a, is a bit of a departure I'd from say a normal. I'd say a good 10% chance. From your normal hardline stance. Do, do you think that you're uh, starting to come around or soften your views on some of the networks that you may have not gotten along with in the past? No, they're, they're <laughs> fake news. <laughs> yeah, fake news. No, they're so bad. One of the good terms, right? Fake news. But uh, no, I don't think so. Kenny says tomorrow's his birthday. Oh my God, is Trump going to be, how old is Trump going to be? Happy birthday, Trump. He's going to be 78 years old. He's looking pretty good for 78. How about that? Okay. Looking pretty good for 78. I won't say anything mean or derogatory, though I was going to make a joke. I won't make a joke. Ah, look at me. <laughs> so mature. Because I think it's important to have a debate or a number of debates, actually. The fact that you are so vocal as well especially on social media i'm not gonna lie again i'm a 12 year old boy i really like how mike has like his little notebook and he's like he's like letting logan lead it but he's just like you can tell he's like ready for the backup of questions and stuff i think it's kind of cute in your favor um and, and personally i like that you come with receipts sometimes <laughs> yeah i've seen yeah. you pull the money no i understand your jacket will you have receipts i like, I like to do it well fact fact checking is fun yeah i know we'll check. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna check a lot of things it's gonna be an interesting you will be watching right i'll be watching oh, yeah. we sure. just don't want to schedule it around one of your fights please don't please don't do pretty well <laughs> i'll be watching yeah i always see you at so UFC. Do you have a, by the way do you have a fight your brother Huh? That's Little the question. question. You want to you want to know something? So, I want to know. Okay, because yeah. right. you're both you are both good. Do you ever fight him? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, uh, I not in real life. You no. practiced a little bit. Never. Them, right? We've never even sparred. Really? We don't know. We don't. We. I think. Well, did you beat him up your whole life? I didn't. Up? I punched him in the face once because he took my glasses, but I was willing to step in for Mike Tyson uh, when Tyson got sick and and had to postpone his fight, and and we actually like ran it up the chain at Netflix. It's hard for brothers to fight though. I think it's hard. Not it's, on Netflix I've seen it over for the a years, big you know? old bag, like yeah, figure it out once some, and for all. It's, I think it's, you don't think so? You love well, your brother? Well, me and Jake decided that obviously like we both come from a place of love and right. whatever the outcome would be, we'd have to be okay with it. But obviously I love no, my brother. No, but the shots to the face and you know. Just, you, just one time though. Yo, Trump's like beat up your brother, bro. Yo, fight your brother, bro. I'm not gonna lie. I, my brother sent me a video of them boxing and literally I watched them both go at each other like this. And then the moment they both made contact with each other's faces, they knocked each other out. And I have never ugly laugh harder in my life. I don't think I, that was so funny. There is something, there is, I would love to watch Jake and Logan fight. I'm not gonna play. But maybe because I have siblings, I have like nine siblings and I love watching, like we're very roughhousey as a family. Not all the siblings. There's like three of them that are less interested, maybe four of them that are less interested in being roughhousey. But the ones of us that are interested in being roughhousey, there is something fun about watching your brothers go at it and like fight. And it's, I don't know, it's pretty funny. Oh, for, for <laughs> the rest of history, you know, yeah. that night goes down forever. The Klitschko brothers never did it. No, it, they never did it. And yeah. they were both good and they yeah. never did it. They were very good. But uh, in fact, nobody really figured out maybe who was better. They had, they had some good fights. They were tough, right? Yeah, they well, Jake, tough. Jake, Jake's tough and he's good, but I'm wanting to know. He's the, very good and street, you're very so. good. He had, a street, he had a street fight this past week <laughs> against somebody from uh, a squad you may know as the oh, Nelk, from the Nelk Boys. Oh, right. Yeah, when you said you had, a, you had it out with them? An Do you think Trump remembers the Nelk brothers? That's the other thing about really famous people. Trump feels like he's good at networking, like he would remember the Nelk bros. You know what I mean? So I, I think he probably would. That's the thing about good networking is you remember people. You remember their name. Do you remember that scene in Devil Wears Prada where she can't remember people's names, so her assistants whisper the names in her ear, so it looks like she does remember names? A street fight. No, no, but but... A friendly one or an unfriendly one? Oh, it was pretty unfriendly. Yeah, I was there. Really? I would you call know, it a waiver fight. I they had a have a note. great following, though. They're nice guys. We love them. They have such a... You do. Good, oh, yeah. I'm glad, because yeah. you know, I'm getting myself into a position here. <laughs> okay, okay. So he does remember them. Okay, he does remember them. See, Trump is a boy. Like, Trump can talk to boys. Like, this section right here, what he just said to them, like, was it an unfriendly fight or a friendly fight? Like, he's having banter with young men. This is appealing to them. They really are. They did, uh, Dana White, who's fantastic. Yeah, for sure. He said, would you do the Nelk boys? I didn't know who they were. 
I did it, and I'm, they have a tremendous audience, which yeah. you can Ferocious. tell. Ferocious, yeah. Right away. I did Dr. Phil the other day. I we saw it. Yeah, he Amazing. was great. We, no, lo we love the Nelk Boys, by the way. The Nelk Boy we're talking about is like a... It's kind of like his an name's Brad. His name's Bradley Martin. He's a big fitness right? guy, because we know Kyle Ford. Wait, Bradley had a street fight with somebody? What? Guard Kyle right. and John Shahidi for right? years That's, now. They're but great. Bradley's this big 260-pound you know, bodybuilder, and for years he's called people out. I'm 260, I'm 260, I'll fight right. you, and got into it with Logan. And, and how did it work out? How you think, Mr. President? I think he probably did pretty good. I've watched <laughs> enough of you fight. <laughs> <laughs> it was off camera, you know, it was cool. It was like oh. a duel, like yeah. a good old fashioned, yeah. just boys being boys, was no it, cameras. It was a real deal. The real deal. And? No rules. Was he finished? He quit. He was, he did. He quit, yeah. But well, we were very impressed with him, actually. He showed up. He has no combat sports experience. Yep. Stepped so up. He to just had who, the, he had muscle, but not the, not yeah. the. Mm. Yep. Just no training. Yeah. Just no training. Bradley fought Logan. Why did I totally miss this? Ever been yeah. in a fist fight, Mr. President? <gasps> Probably not. I've been like little duels, nothing like that. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, Trump has never been in a fist fight. My partner asked me that today. He's like, have you ever like, you know, we were talking about punching people. I was like, I don't, I've never even punched somebody. Like, obviously not. You know, I've got a brother that fights and that's one thing or like who's gotten into street fights and stuff. They're not nice. Like they're definitely dangerous. Um, I've played fight with people, but I've never really punched anybody in the face. No one's ever punched me. Like, girl, come on. I'm an avoider. I'm a peace bringer. I'm a de-escalator. Like, Trump is not out here fighting people. Obviously. I mean, I'd like to say, yeah, I fought my way through school. Right. And, you know, I went through, I fought my way out of the Wharton School of Finance. I fought my, but, yeah. you know, <laughs> we didn't have a lot of fighters. Yeah, yeah. We have fighters, but not that kind of fighters. Uh, but, uh, but I've had a lot of fun. I'll tell you, we had a great time. Over the years, I've been very much involved with Mike Tyson. Mike sure. is a great guy. Uh, my son, I have a beautiful boy, Baron. And he loves Mike Tyson. Beautiful big boy. boy. Big he's, boy. He's huge. He's a big boy. Six, six foot nine. Six foot, Whoa. Six foot nine. Oh, Baron is six nine. I knew Baron was tall, girl. Six nine is wild, though. Uh, oh, my yeah. PDF's at six seven. And I couldn't get him to play basketball. Play soccer. He's a good athlete, too. Good student. Good boy athlete. for soccer. But he's six foot nine. It's insane. Good looking guy, but uh, he is a tall one. There's yeah. no question. I say, yeah. Baron, I don't want to take a picture next to you. It's uh, neither do we. Crazy. We ought to make him a fighter, maybe. No, no, I don't want. No. Guys, it's 2024. We want to spend less and save more. That's just a fact. But how? How? Spend less, save more by liking this stream. It's free. Thank you so much. Commenting does help. Thank you so much. We always see you at the UFC fights. Yeah. So you're obviously a fight fan. I like it. I really enjoy it. I think Dana White is one of a kind. For he's sure. uh, and he's been generous to me. He's made a great statement about me the other day. He I said, saw that. He's that was a nice statement. Well, because he's had his back for Well, since, I I did yeah. and and rightfully. Uh I think, you know, the expression everybody's replaceable. I'm not sure anybody could do. The job he does is unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. He, he gets uh I met Khabib Khabib who's I saw that. Uh, 29 and 0 and his father died. And he just said, that's it for me. And you know, his father was uh, great at what he did. And probably he never lost even a round. I think he, 29, no, they say he never lost a round. And I thought he was great. And we got to speak. He was just about my favorite guy and uh, really talented. The uh, Strickland was fantastic the other night. I thought he was- he Great was, striker. He was- Everyone oh. wants to- Come out of the cage and meet you after they, they win. do. And yeah, they do. I'm very honored by it. This is the most boy conversation I've ever seen Trump in. And honestly, he's shining. And you guys know I've never voted for Trump. I'm not going to vote for Trump, obviously. But he is shining in this interview. He's such an interesting politician. Damn, I can, yeah, fuck, he likable in this interview, bro. He likable. And every time they win, they jump out. Yeah. They jump out of that cage like it's nothing. I don't know, it's pretty high, but they have no problem. And when you enter the arena, there's an eruption of cheers. Yeah. But I remember, because I've been going to UFC for a while, like it, all, it wasn't always like that. There was a very clear like shift in the perception of you. Do, do you feel like you feel that now more than ever? I don't know. You know, I've, I've done it in Vegas, Miami. I do it with them, with Dana. Dana wants me to do that. And I do it and we, it is an eruption. Mm. He said like he's never heard before. Mm. They it's actually nasty. stopped a fight. One of the fighters were walking out and there's a fight going on and these guys are really going at it. 
and they heard this crazy sound, and they stopped the fight. They, they both stopped fighting. They're looking over what happened. Mm. They probably thought bad things were happening to mm. the arena. Mm. But no, it's been uh, it's been great, and and he is just some you know somebody you have to really respect. I imagine you guys do. But he gets these fighters from all over the world, and they are you know some really talented. I will say the thing about uh, Trump, because Stephanie said he's a pretty vibrant guy, especially juxtaposed with Biden. Okay, I voted for Obama and Biden, and I loved Joe Biden during those years. Loved Joe Biden. I got the ick from him eventually, but I loved Biden and Obama. I just was so in love by the time I voted for them their second term around. I just love them. I love the way they spoke. They were so charismatic. The energy was good in a political bubble sense. Now, and I didn't vote for Biden last election or Trump. I didn't vote because I didn't want either of them. But Biden has severely aged significantly different. And I'm not saying I believe in all the conspiracy videos I see of Biden looking old and feeble. Obviously not. There's plenty of videos of both of them looking a mess. But Trump does hold up better. But I really loved Biden and Obama together. It was just such a vibe. But now, and if I compare Trump to Biden, it is hard to see Biden as charismatic anymore. And again, not that that's a reason to vote for a president, But in terms of marketing, Trump is a better marketer, even though he does everything he does. But keep in mind, America is at this like turning point again, which is just what it is, you know, in terms of politics that he's probably going to get his. I'm not going to be surprised if he wins. Let me just say it like that. I just it wouldn't be shocking at this point. America is so specific as an energy. Even here in Croatia, I've met some people that are pro-Trump and anti-Trump. And it's interesting to see people in different countries talk about which president they would prefer just because it is going to impact some, well, world politics. I am fascinated by it. I'm so glad I'm not in politics anymore. I really don't think it's good for your mental health. And at the same time, I understand why people dedicate their lives to it. There's definitely something to this bubble, but I'm glad I can observe it now as somebody who's outside of it. I think it's more interesting that way. You know, the hesitation I have with beating, with understanding the propaganda against Biden, because look, there is propaganda everywhere, right? So like recently in the last 24 hours, there was a video of Biden and it looked like he was wandering off and looked like he was just like thumbs thumbing up like the air and it looked crazy. Right. And I was like, this can't be real. And it wasn't real. It was he was thumbing up a parachute guy who was coming down to the ground. Right wing media seized on a moment at the G7 summit yesterday involving President Biden. The Twitter account, RNC Research, which is managed by Donald Trump's campaign, shared a clip which appeared to show President Biden wandering off from other world leaders before the Italian prime minister comes over to alert him about a group photo. That moment is also on the front cover of today's New York Post with the headline, Meander in Chief. And so it's weird that people, especially these MAGA conservatives that will claim they want the truth, will edit out a video that makes Biden look way worse than he is. And so the issue is like, I just don't believe any of it. And at the same time, I do see Biden going downhill health wise. I do see it. So that's the difference is like, so our options are a criminal who's willing to, you know, basically be a mob boss, Trump. Or a man who's declining. And I feel like, why are these our options? And that's a reflection of us as a country. It really is a reflection of us. And I think that should be a moment of introspection for the people to recognize, like, the world is a reflection of us as a whole. Our community is a reflection of the community, not just one or two people. It is a reflection of us as a whole who make those people rise in power. So, but yeah, I was really annoyed with that video that went around because it just... There's so much misinformation on the internet. There really is. So be careful about that. Uh, what is your What are your thoughts and concerns of, uh, around our current handling of our relationship with Russia? Well, the Russian attack on Ukraine would have never happened uh, if I were president. Would have never happened. It would. It's just a shame. All so many dead people. You look at just the soldiers. It's a half a million soldiers between the both countries. Uh, but so many dead people, so many towns and villages and buildings and all, I mean, magnificent culture just being wiped out. You okay over there? Slips fall yes. over. Sounds good. Nice book, Go by ahead. the way. Nice book. Oh, we'll get book. to that. That's uh-huh. his book. What a little networker. What a little networker. I get it, though. 
Ooh, the 40 chess of politics. Oh, about, yeah, about overcoming drug addiction. It's a everybody. bestseller about the opiate epidemic, which oh, we'll, talk, we'll talk wow, about. Wow, that's, that's a great topic because it's so sad to see what's happening. So bad. But uh, it's a shame because it never would have happened. It, and it didn't happen during my four years. It didn't happen. It wouldn't have happened. I got along very well with Putin. I got along with Zelensky. But it wouldn't have happened. And, uh, and October 7th would have never happened. And... Uh, Inflation would have never happened, and the withdrawal, the kind of withdrawal, we were getting out of Afghanistan with dignity and strength, but to get out the way, I think it was the most embarrassing day in the history of our country. And I actually think that the way Afghanistan worked, uh, I think that when Putin looked at that, he said, wow, let's go in. And you know who else looked at it? President Xi of China. And he's looking, he is looking at Taiwan and he's drooling. He's drooling over Taiwan. And so something could happen there. Uh, we've lost a lot of respect. They're laughing at us all over the world. And that wasn't happening four years ago. And with you back in office, you think we'll get that respect back? Yeah, we'll get it back. We'll Is, get it back. What's your relationship like with Vladimir Putin? Seems I think very good, but I was tough with him. You know, I ended the pipeline. Uh, he built, uh, it's called Nord Stream 2. Nobody ever heard of Nord Stream 2 until I got involved. And it was the biggest you project. Know, the way Logan is just holding his prime cam, I'm so, or sorry, prime can, this whole video is just networking. In my head, I'm just seeing all the ads. Did you guys even, I just noticed it. Like I just, it just hit me that I've been looking at this can and I'm like subconsciously, you know what I mean? So interesting. And I don't drink energy drinks. I always thought Prime was a Gatorade drink, but I guess it's an energy drink. My bad. I did not realize this. So in the past, when I talked about Prime, I didn't understand like what was the big deal. Then I found out it has like four times the amount of caffeine you should be having in a day. That's crazy. That is insane. Absolutely not, ma'am. Ever done in Russia. I mean, you know, this was a pipeline that was going to supply uh, oil and gas to all over Europe, <sighs> all over Europe, Germany in particular. And I said, what are you doing? Why are you doing this to Germany? I said, we're defending you under NATO and you're going to you're paying billions of dollars a month to Russia. You mean we're defending you and you're giving the people we're defending you from, we're giving you uh, the defense, but you're giving them money at, at massive amounts. Probably the biggest project, you know, most important, one of the most important projects they've ever done. I ended it. It was dead. It was gone. And then this guy comes in and he approves it, but he kills Keystone. You know, the Key, Keystone mm -hmm. XL. Yep. Uh, so it's, uh, it's sad. But Putin said to me, it's the biggest thing. You ended it. You ended the pipeline. He said, they all say you and I are friendly, but I'd hate to see you as an enemy. But this was the biggest, you know, this was massive amounts of money. And everything but that's else. how you, that, but you Biden like came that? in. Huh? You talked to him like that? Oh, no, I had a very good relationship. <laughs> that's a good thing, not a bad thing. And I'm trying to tell people, no, it's a good thing. Uh, they've got, uh, I, I would give you the exact number, but they gave a lot. Just under 2,000 nuclear weapons, and we do also. And when you have <laughs> nuclear weapons, and even if you don't have nuclear weapons, getting along is good, but be the tough one, be the smart one, get along is good. I tell the press all the time, no, the fact that I get along with Kim Jong-un, North Korea. That's crazy. Uh, President Xi. That's crazy. It's all good stuff getting along, but. There's something to this where I do like people who get along with people. I think it's like a great skill to get along with people, but you do always give up. You do have to compromise to get along with people. So then the question is, well, what if we just didn't get along with people? But then that in and of itself is pretty dangerous. It's good to have allies. And so it is interesting, even from a, a micro sense, like outside of politics sense, the reason we build communities is because it's just safer to be a part of one. So it is kind of interesting. Like you do want a president that gets along with people, but also should we be compromising with different countries? But then who wants to do World War III? I don't want to do that. Do you want to do that? I don't want to do that. I don't even think we should be going to war right now. How civilized are we if we're still going to war? You know, I don't know what civilization is supposed to look like, but in my brain, I was hoping it wouldn't involve tanks. That's true. Cognitive says Trump is friends with all the dictators. That's pretty good. Yeah, to be fair, he is. Uh, to be fair, lots of people don't like Trump in other countries, but all the worst people like Trump. China built their military because of the United States. The United States was giving them hundreds of billions of dollars a year in excess flow. I, nobody's ever seen anything like it. But we uh, took out hundreds of billions of dollars from China. And I China. still got along with President Xi until COVID. That was sort of, that was a breaking point. But uh, uh, why 
are we laughing? Why are we laughing over COVID, sir? I know why. Alex says the other question is, what are you compromising exactly to get along? That's always the question, which is why you have to know your values. And then as a country, you have to know your values. I do think America is just too divided. And that's just like what's sort of unique about us, maybe. I don't know. But I, I do think that's the messiness that's coming in. No, but he was a guy that I respected. Liked He liked me and I liked him. That's a good thing, not a bad thing. You know, the press says, oh, isn't it? Uh, you say, yeah, he's a leader. He's a smart guy. They say, a smart man. They say, oh, Trump said he was smart. That's, yeah, he leads 1.4 billion people. <laughs> he's, yeah, it's a little bit on the smart side. But I got along yeah, with him. Yeah, I do I think we equate intelligence with morals, and I think that's a really fucking stupid idea. It's actually one idea that I really sort of resent in myself. I fall for that trap too, where I'll hear myself say something like, Oh, if you were smarter or more intelligent or more introspective, why wouldn't you do this? Because those things don't equate morals. Those things don't equate right and wrong. We think they do, but there's no evidence for that. There's absolutely no evidence that intelligence makes you a better person. But we think it does. In the same way we think beauty makes you a better person morally, but it doesn't. That's one of the benefits of pretty privilege. People literally think you are more innocent when that is just not true. And so it is kind of interesting. We have to watch. That's that, you know, question about free will comes into play. If my monkey brain automatically assumes you're innocent because you're beautiful, how much of that is my free will really coming to a decision making? You know, am I really making this decision or am I just going off of what I'm perceiving, which my perception can lie to me, right? Be careful. That's why I think so many women fall for pretty men and so many men fall for pretty women because you think they're good people because they're pretty or they're bad people because they're ugly, whatever that means, right? Mm -mm. I got along with Kim Jong-un. That would have been a nuclear war. If Hillary Clinton had gotten in office, we would, be in a, we would have been in a nuclear war with North Korea. He was ready for it um, when I... He wishes. He wishes he could fight a war. There's no way, like, North, I just don't see North Korea, Korea ever being able to win. But, you know, maybe that's, I don't know. Was with him. Nobody else could meet him. All of a sudden, the, the dam broke, and we started talking a little bit. We got together, as you know, twice. Got along very well. But we were in no danger from them, and we were uh, in serious danger before I got there. You would, I'm telling you, you would have had a nuclear war if Hillary Clinton got in. I, uh, that's, I'm so curious, like, what this conversation with, with really powerful world leaders looks like behind closed doors. Like, is it is it candid, or do you exercise grace? Or you They're talk like boys? Everyone's like, ah, different. The, no, but everyone's different. It's like uh, when you're talking to people, when you're doing interviews with people, when you're fighting people, they're all different. You mm -hmm. know, you fight mm -hmm. them a different way. You mm -hmm. talk to them a different way. True. But everyone's True. different. But I had very good relationships with everyone. Uh, the funny thing is I got along with the tough ones much better than I got along with the weak ones. You had some real weak ones, too. I didn't get along with them as well. It's strange. It must That's be a personality good, defect. A good thing. Interesting. Interesting who he's categorizing as strong and who he's categorizing as weak. Kind of interesting. The tougher ones. I get what he's saying, but also, also strength is also seen as a, oh, wait until you see Monday's video, girls. Monday's video. We mistake weakness and strength in people all the time as also a moralization of, of good and bad because of how we view strength. You know, the tough ones, the strength, the strength, the strong ones, the, the, you know, difficult ones, like even difficult can be negative or positive depending on the bubble. Huh? It's probably a good thing that you go, get along with the, I get along with the leaders of the largest so, countries. You know, uh, there's a very tough one, uh, Viktor Orban, and he's the uh, prime minister of Hungary. And he said that the reason the world is blowing up because Trump isn't president. When Trump was there, everybody respected Trump. He said was afraid of Trump. I don't want to use that term because that's, you know, I don't want to say, oh, they were afraid, like a child would say. But they respected me. But uh, he said everyone listened to Trump. They were afraid of Trump. They couldn't figure Trump out. And they all listened. And they did listen. And we had no wars. We had no nothing. I defeated ISIS, got rid of the biggest terrorists ever, maybe, or just about ever. Uh, but we defeated, think of that, we knocked out ISIS, 100% of the ISIS caliphate, and started no wars. I wasn't in any wars. Now that, I don't know how you may feel about that, because 
you know, you're a warrior, right? Because all fighters, and you're a real fighter, by the way. It's not good. It's not good. I, 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 I yeah. don't shy away from conflict. My fiance has a problem with it. Yeah. It's not. It's not good. You, yeah. You do. You're much more diplomatic than I probably <laughs> would be. <laughs> you know, it's very interesting though. So Khabib came up to me after the fight the other night, and you know, you guys would probably say he's the best ever, maybe, and you know. Probably. He's Certainly, in the he probably is, and or very close, right? Mm -hmm. John Jones, a lot of people right say. I'd say one and two. And you know, and he said to me, "Oh, I hope you can get in because we have to stop the wars. We have to stop the killing. The killing." He was so smart. He understood it, and I think he's friends or was friends, but I think he is friends with Putin very much. Yeah. But uh, he said we have to stop the killing, and it's true. And I think I'd have that war stopped if I was president elect. Right after the election, if I win, I will get that war stopped. I'll get it stopped fast before I get to office. Mm -hmm. If it's not stopped before then. Talking about Russia, Ukraine. I could see that happening. I could see that happening. I could see some sort of negotiation happening. I could even see it happening just for business, just for like 40 chess reasons, just for networking reasons. Some of those things going away when Trump becomes president, just because at the end of the day, it's about the deals you make. And I do think Putin's more than likely to make a deal with Trump than with Biden. So it's not that crazy that Trump could possibly end or sort of make that war end in a way that works for, quote, everybody, quote, end quote. So we'll see. And that would be interesting. I think that's the problem with politics because it's not about truth or morals. It's about winning. What does winning look like and at what expense? And I do think that's why it eats at you because it's kind of ugly that winning is often ugly as much as it feels like a relief. It will be interesting. Yeah, I don't know what kind of a deal he would be willing to do with Putin, though, but I obviously think they're much more open to it, right? I think that's whole, Trump's whole thing is like, I'll make a deal with you. What is it, right? So as long as he makes a deal that works for people, it might just work. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about Russia, Ukraine. We'll, on get, the, it, we'll the, get it stopped. On the so many side. people are being killed. Far more people are being killed. And I thought it was great when... Khabib came up to me and he says, we've got to stop all of the killing in the world. He's a very smart guy, very interesting guy. We talked for a while. On the flip side, or on the other side of the, the uh, continent, the Gaza uh, yeah. situation has been Horrible. big news over the past year or so. You've always, the United States has always been, and you were always a staunch ally of, right. of Israel. Um, has your sentiment on Netanyahu or on his regime changed at all in light of any of the events mm -hmm. of the past six months? No, look, they, it, it was a shame that it should have never happened. It would have never happened. Iran was broke when I was president. Nobody was allowed to buy oil. Nobody was allowed to buy anything. They were broke. A, a Democrat congressman uh, on Deface the Nation, the show Deface the Nation. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Deface the Nation. Yes, <laughs> commonly known as Face the Nation, but I don't call it that. You have a name I for I think everything. I have a more, I have a name for everything. I'll end up with a name for you two guys by the time. Yeah. I, but it'll be, I can't wait to hear No, mom. no, they'll be good names, they'll be good names. But uh, so he was on the show and he said, uh, whether you like Trump or not, Iran was broke during Trump's, uh, they, they would have made a deal within one week and now they have $250 billion. We would have had a deal done in one, literally in one week after the election. And it was ready. They were absolutely, and they had no money for Hamas. They had no money for Hezbollah. They were broke. Stone cold broke. Now they have two. Mm. Okay, before he like goes on his propaganda thing, Texas, sadly, fear does equal respect. People walk over nice people all the time. Learn this from personal experience. I would argue that being a nice person is not a good thing. You want to be a kind person with strong morals, okay? Niceness is a facade. It's I'm nice even when I shouldn't be. Niceness is not helpful. You don't want to be a nice guy. You don't want to be a nice girl. You want to be a kind person with strong morals so you can stand up for yourself. I would say fear does not equal respect. Fear equals compliance until they get the power to overthrow you. It is not equal respect. True respect is not through fear. 
And niceness is not the same as kindness. This is so perfectly timed for Monday's video because ma'am, just to give you guys a little bit of a preview, the way we mistake like the weak for the strong, the way we mistake the strong for the weak, the way we do not understand the strength of character is so specifically different than what people perceive as things they are afraid of. People who are afraid of you do not respect you. That is not true. They fear you. What you want, though, is a person that is kind and strong so you can root for them as a leader and you can follow somebody that you feel proud of. And I think that's very specific. Alex says respect is given, not forced. Exactly. Okay, niceness is a performance. You can do it if you'd like, but I don't like it. I don't like when people are nice to me because it's a performance. Be kind, like be a good person. If you're a kind person, be kind. But don't fake your fucking niceness with me, bro. Trump is very good at being nice. He's not a very kind person. I don't want your niceness. Your niceness is fake, and I can sniff it a mile away. $250 billion. Uh, Biden took off all of the sanctions. He took, he let them go. China went to town. I told China, if you buy one barrel of oil from these people, you're not doing any business with the United States. They took a pass, no oil, and other countries likewise. And we would have had a deal. It would have been a great deal for everybody. We would have had a deal. Now they have $250 billion. They made it all on three years, three and a half years. They made it all during this Biden term. I mean, he gave him $6 billion for five hostages, right? You saw that recently, mm -hmm. a couple of months ago. $6 billion for five hostages. Uh, he made the swap. The uh, Prince of Terror, they call him. He's the best arms dealer ever, they say. Who knows what that means, but he was a great arms dealer. For the basketball player that wouldn't uh, stand up during the national anthem, she thought, if you think Brittany Griner deserved to be in that jail cell, you are not a kind person. If you think Brittany Griner deserved to stay in Russian prisons, you are not a kind person. You are a viciously unkind person. There is nothing moral or ethical about leaving Brittany Griner in that fucking prison cell. She shouldn't have been there in the first place. And people who wished ill on her, I'm watching you. Do you know when that happened, my dad called me and he was like, Betty, Betty, are you doing drugs in a foreign country? And I said, no, I wouldn't risk prison here, but not because I'm better than Brittany Griner. I just literally have more anxiety and fear of actually being imprisoned, you know? And he was so worried about me. His heart went out to Brittany Griner. My dad was so sad for her because he knows his kids are stupid. And people are stupid and people make mistakes all the time. The Americans that were caught in Mexico with four bullets in their bag, my heart goes out to them. I am devastated for them that they might not come back to their families because they left a couple of like pieces of ammo in their bags that got through our TSA and ended up being seen in Mexico's. That sucks. And for people that think they deserve it, you're just as disgusting as the people you claim to be better than. Humans are so unkind as a species because kindness is learned. And for some people, it's inherent. But the idea that you think these people deserve to be separated from their families because they might vote differently from you or they might be, it's just so beyond cruel. Look how ugly you are as a person. Look how ugly your spirit is that you can't show kindness to people who made a mistake, a true mistake. Now, I understand at some point you make the mistake too many times in a row. Now it's just a choice. And then people have to live by their choices for sure. Okay. Fool me once. Shame on you. Fool me twice. Shame on me. I get it. But it's gross the way people are excited to watch people suffer. But then you think about it and you think about the stadiums. You think about the gladiators. You think about what human beings have celebrated, the violence people celebrate. And I'm not saying I'm exempt from this. I grew up in a bubble where I absolutely tried to celebrate the death of people because it was how I was raised. And then you realize like, ew, what am I doing? But people do it all the time. They wish death on presidents. They wish death on people. They wish death on lots of people. But what is death? Because there's definitely worse things than death, like maybe going to a Russian prison for 15 years.
That sounds worse than death. I thought that was a good time to tire sneakers. And uh, that was not exactly the greatest trade, but he gave $6 billion on top of every six billion billion with a B. And they don't know what they're doing. And when you do that, you know, when you start paying that kind of money, a lot of other people are going to be missing all of a sudden. They're going to be missing and, hey, let's mm -hmm. make a trade. Mm -hmm. And that's already happening. You just can't do that. I got 58 people out. We never paid any money. 58 people, 58 hostages. We never paid money. Because once you pay money, you're going to be doing a lot. In other words, you're going to keep doing it. I want to ask about money, money in this country. Go ahead. Uh, I've had a very uh, fortunate career. Yeah. I've, I've, made, I've, made, I've made some money. And More money than you ever thought possible. For sure. Right? For, for sure. Yeah, I know, I know the kind of money you make because I know when you have a, a top event or and your shows, but these events are doing fantastic. Yeah, what yeah. you've done is incredible. Actually. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very blessed. And, and part of the reason that I believe I'm blessed is because of this country. And, yeah. and, yeah. and I think uh, in a way, I'm kind of living like the modern day American dream. You know, I had access to a phone and, and could start my business. Hold up. Google, which is always wrong, says Logan Paul's worth 150 million. Oh my God. I mean, I kind of believe it, but also, oh my God, it's probably like more or less. Like it's probably more, honestly. Uh, you know, my partner said this to me the other day. He said, it's so interesting that Asmin and me basically became YouTubers because our dads were kind of into tech. And it's true. My dad is the one who told me I should do YouTube. I was going to go for radio. And he's like, fuck radio, do YouTube. And I was like, oh, yeah, I should do YouTube. And I did. It took me a really long time. But yeah, I do it full time now. I replace my original incomes with it. And that was always the goal. You know, I think people that think about, oh, I want to be a YouTuber so I can be a multimillionaire. Don't. If you really want to do this job, think about it. We're just replacing the income you're making now. So you can make 40K being a YouTuber or 40K going to your nine to five. That's how I always looked at it replace the money I was making in my industry, which was nannying and children, replace it with YouTube. That was always the way I thought about it. And now that I replaced my income, I get to do this instead. So it does take technically more hours in the day to basically make the same amount of money, but at least I get to be from home and at least I don't have to travel, at least I don't need a car and at least I don't have to commute and at least I get to, you know, there's a lot of perks, obviously, but that's how I think about it. Because YouTube is an industry in which you can make, you know, 40K a year, and replace that income you're making going to Walmart or replace that income you're making going to your minimum wage job. That's what I thought about it as. I always worked grocery, if you guys are new to my audience, and that's all I did is I replaced that income that I was making. And that's how I think about it. But I think people dream too big and they think like, I need to be the million, the millionaire YouTuber. Mm. But mostly what this means is like what Logan just said, which is I'm lucky I grew up with cameras. I'm lucky I grew up with a dad who liked technology. My dad is such a tech whiz. He loves technology. And that means that I love technology. My dad is a business owner, which means I love owning a business. Like my dad let me go to work with him on the weekends as a way for me to kind of like jump into my own career. And I would love that. Like that was my dream every weekend is like, I want to go to Home Depot and then I want to go to work with my dad. And he'd be like, yeah, come with me. And I'm like, cool. He encouraged me to do this which is very lucky because a lot of parents discourage you. Have you guys heard the story about Quentin Tarantino and how he doesn't give his mom any money because she basically told him his whole life he'll never be successful at writing his stories and he'll never be anybody important and he'll never own up to anything. And so because of that, like he doesn't give her any of his money, basically. I think he did a couple of times technically, but I think it's interesting. You know, Emmy says, how do you feel about nature versus nurture? I think we are all nature and nurture. I think we are biological creatures with different levels of introspection and awareness. And every person has a different, but always a biological experience. But I think we are always the combination of nature versus nurture. We get a certain type of, you know, genetic predisposition. And then on top of that, we can do with what we can. Some of us are limited in more ways and some of us aren't in others. But we are what we are. And so the possibilities are endless depending on what, you know, what you were dealt. And reached the entire world on this device. So, um, my excuse me, did you guys start like separately? Me Someone? and Jake? Yes. Not nah, together. Oh, together. you started. So you started together. Together on YouTube. And did you branch out? You each have your yeah, own Yeah, well, eventually, because I went to college. 
Jake was yeah. still in high school. He ended up dropping out. I, I I finished my first year. It's an amazing two stories, right? Yeah, for sure. Who makes more money? Uh, oh, oh, it, it depends oh, on the year. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I'm the second highest earner in my parents' kids' family. Thank you. My farm brother makes so much more money than me, but one day I will catch up to him. It's true. We we were very transparent as siblings with how much we all make. We're we're pretty transparent for the most part. Um, and so, yeah, it's kind of interesting. Like, who makes more money? I love that question. Here. It, it, de it depends if Jake has fights. <laughs> and, it, and it depends on when this sells, right? Here. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think. Is I, that your new drink? Yeah. Oh, uh, that's good. Oh, yeah, well. yeah, if, yeah. If you, if you make it, I like it. Oh, thank you. You want to get president? You know what? Wow. You might as well just, like, fucking. They, you know how they would make a lot of money if they all did OF together? I, even I'd buy that. Yeah, it's got to be good. It's got to be. Look, something's propelling him to fight world champions to a draw, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. We uh, we actually made this uh, American oh, uh, Prime beautiful. special wow. for this episode. Wow. It's a hydration. Beverage. It's doing fine. Doing well. We did uh, 1.2 billion last year. That's year, great. Year two. That's that's fantastic. But 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 I, again, I'm I'm, I'm blessed that's to crazy. have yeah. even just be able to say that is insane. That's insane. But my question is, um, wow. for other young people in this country who are who are looking to get ahead. Because for a lot of them, times are tough right yep. now. It's very um, tough. What What would you say to them, kids? Kids who want to pursue their own version of the American dream and 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 try to um, achieve their wildest dreams and, and yeah. make it all come true. I would say very simply, honestly, vote for Trump, because with Biden, you're never going to do it. This country's going to hell. Oh, brother! Vote for Trump. You know, we're doing great with youth. We're doing great with. African Americans with Hispanic Americans through the roof, both of those groups, with women, with men, and with young people were doing very well. But I say vote for Trump. If you don't have the right guy in the lead, the country's not gonna, you know, if, if the country doesn't do well, it's much harder to mm. do even what mm. you do, mm. okay? Even what you do. So that would be a simple message. I really, and I really mean it actually. Mm. The same opportunities he's had in America, I've had as well. My road has been a little bit rockier, as we were talking about with my book, The Fifth Vital. Um, I spent uh, eight years addicted to heroin, um, living on the East Coast, wow. uh, in what I considered, you know, I, I think a lot of people considered. So to be you the, were addicted? Correct. Wow. I think a lot of people considered to be the great opioid. Let me epidemic. see the book. Can I see the book? Absolutely. We're going to get, we're going to make this sucker up. Wow, Trump's going to kiss the book like he would kiss a baby. Selling book. There's a message. There's a message for you. No, it's such an important. It's actually. It's actually already. my camera? It's already a best-selling book. Buy this book. It's great. Wow. Oh. Okay. I will say this. Let me say this. Let me say this about men. Let me say this about men. This type of man. This category of man. This business networking entrepreneurial category of man. Man. Networking, 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 network. They are such little networkers. They are such little networkers. And it is so interesting to watch. And you know what's interesting to watch? Is it is the number one way to success. Even on YouTube, collaborations are your success. And it is, that's why it's so difficult when you don't have enough collaborations with YouTubers. Because you can make it on your own. But collaborations absolutely speed up the process. You know, like I'm pretty successful. I don't need a lot of collaborations, but also, oh my gosh, my success would have gone through the roof if I just like picked a group and collabed and collabed and collabed and collabed and like we built each other up, but that's the dilemma. Who do you end up networking with that is going to cross over with your values and is going to make you feel good about endorsing? Because Logan and Trump and Mike actually probably do overlap with values, but to be fair, they don't want to like, I think Logan doesn't like Andrew Tate which is interesting because Andrew Tate and Fresh and Fit overlap. So see how these are two different bubbles of boys, but they work the same. Uh, Myron, when he wrote his book, Women Deserve Less, I did a review of it. It's a bad book, but okay. He shouted out his boys at the beginning and those are his network and they lift each other up with views and then Trump and the Logans lift them up. Like, I don't know if Fresh and Fit would ever be allowed to interview the president, but look at how the president interacts with suburb boys. So fresh and fit, they're trash. I'm sorry. They're not suburb boys. They're trash. So they can't. It's not good for branding in my opinion, but the Nelk boys and Logan, they're suburb boys. They feel much safer. They're much more in the middle. They're not out here saying those things about women, but they are just as misogynistic, but it's actually like they're a little bit less misogynistic than the fresh and fit bubble. So it's kind of interesting. Like 
Fresh and Fit Bubble made fun of Logan for allowing his woman to be a model, right? So think about that. That's the levels of misogyny. Misogyny is on a spectrum, right? And we all, you know, suffer from internalized maybe uh, lots of things, but okay. So there's like a level to it. I think this is fascinating. I love it. I love this bubble. I think it's so interesting. I don't love it. Like I want to be in it. I just think it's so interesting to observe, you know? Oh, so interesting. Kelsey says, since watching your streams more regularly these fast past few months, these last few months, oh my gosh, I've come to the goal to be debt-free by 30 and make an annual income of 50K or more by 30. I'm 28 now. Let's go, girl. Kelsey says, things are falling into place so nicely and possibilities are opening up for me. It's so exciting. I have a note in my app with a plan of how to become a whole human being. Yes, girl, let's go. You know, it's all about that timing, girl. It was just, you're doing the work. It was just the overlap in timing. Sometimes it's like, okay, I'm ready to make a change and you're doing it. I love to see it. Love to see it. That was for you, I believe. I wrote a message to you. Oh, in there. Yeah. Well, I'm going to keep it. Thank it, you but so much. It's such an important topic. Yeah, seriously, that's mm. so important. There's a lot of people that are still kind of wrapped up in that world. And I just yeah. want to ask you some questions. In, in 2023, the DEA sees more than 80 million fentanyl lace fake pills, uh, 12,000 pounds of fentanyl powder. Um, there's so many people out there on the streets right now without access to resources with mental health for mental health health care, uh, re rehabilitation centers. Yeah. What's your plan to continue to uh, stem the the flow of fentanyl into the country as well as help the people who've already fentanyl is so sad did you hear about the girl that just died on one single pill i think she was a med student too like i think she was a med student i'm so sad for her fentanyl is no joke cousin died from fentanyl my brother's lost friends to fentanyl like ugh. like you guys know i don't think drugs are immoral i think the people pushing out basically death drugs are super immoral and ethical, and they're definitely impacting society. Oh, it breaks my heart. You've fallen victim to the opiate epidemic. So when I took over, you know, it was drug infested. When I ran in 2016, I ran on the border, and I fixed the border, and I couldn't even use it in 2020 in the campaign, even though I got millions of more votes than I got the first time. I couldn't talk about the border because I fixed it. And I'd say to my people, I want to talk about the border, I was proud of the job we did. We had it fixed. It was really in good shape. And drugs were at the lowest point in years. And, you know, not only people, drugs, human trafficking, which mm. is such a horrible thing. It's, mm. You think of it as like an ancient kind of a crime. And it's, it's bigger now than ever before because of the Internet. You know, the Internet has made a lot of these things much bigger than they have ever been. When you think of human trafficking, mostly in women, by the way, mo people don't know that, mostly in women, where they put them in trunks of cars, they have compartments, it's so horrible. And I had it down to a real, to the lowest level, just about, uh, I guess in recorded, recorded times. So what- I don't know about that, but I will say that he is right. Where people do think like trafficking is sort of an ancient crime. We think a lot of crimes are ancient, but they're still happening, they just look different. What you have to do is you have to be very tough on that. We had a deal on the fentanyl is pouring through. I bought millions of dollars worth of equipment. Believe it or not, they call it sniffing equipment, but believe it or not, the best thing to find it, you can spend millions of dollars on equipment and machinery to find drugs coming through, like, you know, sort of finds it. The best thing is a German shepherd. But we have to be very, very strong at the border. This is really, this is a plague like... And you know, the numbers, they, they'd say 70,000, 80,000. I think it's probably 250 or 300,000. This is like a war. There's rarely a war. I mean, how many wars were you losing? 300,000 people a year. Damn. And everybody knows a family. Yeah. I know many families where their children die. True. I can name a few. It sucks. You know, I used to grow up as a kid thinking it would be very rare to have somebody in the family that was assaulted or have somebody in the family that died or have somebody in the family that overdosed or died from unaliving. But no, like it's when you really find out how that's why I think we're all born into dysfunction. And I think we're all traumatized in different ways. I think life itself is traumatizing. It's just a spectrum. So it's like a gradient of color and you fit into different things. So I will say that there is always more, I think we're just more aware of the dysfunction. I think it's more out there now. I think people are less ashamed of talking about it, which is good because now we can try to solve it. But now it feels probably overwhelming where people are like, can we go back to when it wasn't happening? But it was always happening. 
we just didn't talk about it. So now it's much more common to say, oh yeah, my relative died of unaliving or my relative died of an overdose or my relative was assaulted or it's just much more, and I, as I think it should be, open. And that means we have to do something about it in a much more in-your-face way than before. It used to be other people's like, oh, we're not those kinds of families. And yes, every family is not that kind of a family, but your family has something in it. The question is, what is it? What's the dirt? What's the darkness in your family that's real? Not even addicted. They take a pill that's unrelated mm. and it it had so got a little bit of fentanyl. They say you can take the the uh, head of a needle and you just put a piece on it and that's enough to kill like 10 people. It's it is a really horrible thing and I would have had China uh, giving their maximum penalty. They would not have been sending it and I had a deal worked out with President Xi but of course, Biden didn't follow up, just like he didn't follow up on the uh, Abraham Accords, which would have been a great thing to do. So we have to be very tough on the border. And that includes uh, drugs as well as people, as well as, well as uh, people not coming in from jails and prisons and, you know, mental institutions, which is, which is happening now at, at levels that nobody's ever seen before. It's crazy. How can it be good? It's so bad. And I, I guess they're either stupid, which they're not, they hate our country, or they want to get these people for votes. A lot of people think that's, that's the thing, it's they want to get them for votes. But the, the destruction, the damage that Biden's done to our country by having 16, 17 million people already in, you know, it's much more than they say. It's probably 17, I, it could be even higher than that, in our country, and these are not people that are going to make America great again. These are people that have a lot of issues. And we're going to have a lot of issues as long as they're here. And we're going to get them out. We have to get them out. Mr. President, I got the 10-minute yeah, warning yeah. from the team, oh. which is now eight minute. Uh, let's let's uh, let him go a little longer. It's oh. I like it. Oh. Is that okay? Oh, what? Oh, damn. Oh, he's so good. Oh, he's so good. Oh, he's so good. Let them go a little longer. I like these guys. Let let them go a little longer. Oh, he's so good at marketing. Fuck. Oh, Biden's going to lose, bro. Biden's going to fucking lose. Uh, <laughs> yeah, let him go a little bit longer, okay? <laughs> he's like, I'm the president. I can, uh, I'm the president. Uh, just, oh, fuck. He's going to win, bro. You're fucked. America's fucked. Trump's winning. Trump's going to win. Trump's going to win and he's going to do such a good job at it that the Dems are going to be fucked for the next 10 elections. I swear. Fuck. That's so funny. Okay. Oh, look at these two guys. Just, just and then stopped. it'll turn out to be a lousy show and I'll say, you were right, Jason. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it'll no. be good. Uh, so go for another 20 minutes. Is that all right? Oh, my okay, God. Go. Thank you, Jason. It seems to be a nice flow. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah, so yeah, let's, yeah, yeah. let's go. Well, you did reality. TV. I'll be in trouble yeah. with my people like Biden says, oh, my heck. <laughs> I don't have that problem, but... <laughs> Well, first of all, he would never. He's he couldn't do this interview. We if were, you asked him questions like this. No, we were think we were talking about that. We were like, oh, we he would, wouldn't. We would, well, we'd like to extend the invite to Joe Biden if he'd like to come on this podcast. Yeah, I think eventually. he should. I, you know what chance you have of getting him on? <laughs> I'd say less than one percent. Okay, if you did that, it'd be. I'd, I'd actually watch that one. <laughs> Okay, see how long it lasted. So the, the, there are two questions I have to ask. Go ahead. You. The first one's kind of fun. Aliens. I want to talk to you about aliens, yeah. UFOs, UAPs. I know sure. the disclosure we've seen in Congress yeah. recently. It's 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 confusing and upsetting a lot of Americans because something's going. There's something happening. There are unidentified aerial phenomena in the sky. We don't know what they are. Do you? So it's such a a, a question I do get a lot, and it's such an interesting question. I've met with pilots that look just like you, actually. Okay, they have more of a crew cut. Okay. They, they look like him and they look like you. Some of them look like you. <laughs> a little fatter. <laughs> but they, these are perfect people. Okay. And they're not, not you crazy. Know, conspiratorial. Yeah. They're right. not crazy. Yeah. And they tell me stories that they've seen things that you wouldn't believe. These are not people that you would say, There's gee. No so oh, that's no okay. Way. President of the United States. But I said. Was who is it? That's it? Joe Biden wanting to do an interview. <laughs> <laughs> He's so funny. Did Mike's phone really go off? Is it a prank? No, wait. Oh, I don't know what's happening. But either way, look how fast Trump is. That's Joe Biden. Uh, so I've met with pilots 
like beautiful Tom Cruise, but taller. Yeah. Okay. Wow. His phone really just went off. I wouldn't even have my phone on me. I'd be so anxious. Handsome, perfect people. Sir, there was something there that was round in form and going like four times faster than my super jet fighter plane. And I look at these guys and they really mean it. Yeah. And am I a believer? No, I probably, I can't say I am. But I have met with people that are serious people mm. that say there's some really strange things that they see flying around out there. And you know, if you go to Nevada and you look at that little section of, of uh, where, where they go to look at uh, the aliens, where they think all the aliens are landing. That, you know, it's one of, I think it's a, maybe the number one tourist attraction in the United Ros States. Roswell? Yeah. Yeah. Roswell. It's, <laughs> I think it's the number one. It's, Damn. It's the lines of people. K.O. says Biden needs to do interviews like this, sprinkle some Adderall in his food or something. I do. I do. This is so bad, but I do think he would get lost in the convert. Like I keep waiting for Trump to get lost in the conversation. I keep waiting for him to kind of be too old or boomer to get their references and it's not happening. And I think that says something because even Hillary, they have caught Hillary so many times being such a boomer in interviews with people. They've caught Biden, but Trump, like he's, he's, he's doing really well. I'm, you know, I'm not going to vote for him. I'm not a Trump fan, but just like networking observation, damn, like business observation, damn, he's good. He's good. People waiting. It, you have no idea how many times I'm asked that question. But don't you have access to that information? I have access, but, and I, I speak to people about it. I've had actually meetings on it and they will tell you there's something going on when they say things Things are going four times faster than my beautiful top of the line airplane that goes, you know, <laughs> Mach real fast. With no identifiable Mach, propulsion Mach system. Two, yeah. right? These, these things are creating their own gravity fields, allegedly. Well, they, they have, they have uh, people that are very smart and very solid have said they believe there is something out there. And you know, it makes sense that there could be. I've never been convinced even despite that. You know, mm -hmm. I just, for some reason, it's not my thing. Yeah, I kind of in the same way where I'm not really like a believer of aliens, even with the people's stories, but I'm open. Like, it makes sense that they could be real. It was the second question because, mm. you know, technology is is improving at a rapid pace. That's right. At a pace humanity has never seen before. And the most recent development in technology that is alarming but also cool is artificial intelligence, AI. Yeah. Um, I think it's going to be eventually to a point where we're not able to tell what's real and what's fake. Mm. The era of truth, I believe, is probably... I mean, people can't tell right now. Like, people literally can't tell right now. And even I have to check everything. I have to Google everything because I don't know. Like, videos are really good. Editing is really good. And I'm, I've got a pretty good eye for it, but you have to also keep up with the times. So you have to keep up with the trends. And that means, like, even the other day... um, on my video, I'm sure no one noticed, on one of my videos, I did an overlay and I did me saying something. It wasn't me, it was AI Britney. I'm now using an AI Britney in some of my like edits and stuff where I, I need to say something, but I need it to sound like very specific and I'm using an AI voice. And I got the idea from Asmin because his editor does the same thing. And sometimes his editor will have him say things he's never said and he thinks it's so funny, but like, I'm not doing that. I'm not taking it that far. It's more like, hey, join memberships and like be a part of Patreon or something or be a part of YouTube. Like I'm, I'm doing something like that and I'll use AI Britney. And I don't know if anyone, no one's like noticed. So it's kind of funny. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to be good at my job, y'all. I'm trying to be good at my job, you know, please like the stream. Thank you so much. You know, just trying to adapt. What do you think the government's role in enabling, protecting, or governing AI should be in general? Should this superpower become what we believe it probably will be? Well, it is a superpower, and you want to be right at the beginning of it, mm. but it is very disconcerting. I said, you know, you used the word alarming. It is alarming when I saw a picture of me promoting a product, and I could not tell. The voice was perfect. The lips moved perfectly with every word the way... <laughs> You couldn't, if you were a lip reader, you'd say it's absolutely perfect. And that's scary. 
in, in particular, in one way, if you're the President of the United States and you announce that 13 missiles have been sent to, let's not use the name of a country, we have just sent 13 nuclear missiles heading to somewhere, and they will hit their targets in 12 minutes and 59 seconds, and you're that country, and there's no way of detect. You know, I asked Elon, is there any way that, like, Russia or China can say that that's not really President Trump? He said there's no way. They'd have to rely on secondary they, first they alerts. To, no, systems. they have to rely on. You know, I just watched the Instagram CEO uh, on Colin and Samir talk about this, how basically Instagram will flag things that have AI, but even pictures that have been heavily, heavily edited could be flagged as AI. So, you know, a lot of these photos you see are have been heavily Photoshopped. And that specific program there's something that flags it as ai it's not that it is technically ai like completely fake what from like total scratch but yes there will be some sort of way to flag it in their program but it's all automated by a system so there's going to be things that get through and i think that's why it has to be a combination of them doing what they need to do as a business and us doing what we need to do in terms of our literacy we want to up our media literacy we want to be very good at trying to like guess what's real and fake. And look, I'm not afraid of AI. I'm going to be real with you. The world never needed AI to be corrupt. The world never needed AI to traffic. The world never needed AI to do horrible things to each other. So I'm not concerned. I'm an adapter though. And Dr. K talks about this, how like those who adapt, that's where it's at. So I'm not worried because I'm an adapter. But I will say I'm worried about those who do not adapt. I am concerned. So if you guys need tools on how to adapt to changes, Let's have those conversations because I do think that's going to be the difference between those who panic and those who don't. Because there's no reason to panic over human beings. If you weren't panicking before AI, why are we panicking now? And also, why are you panicking in general? What are you actually afraid about? Like, what are you afraid of? I met with incredible people in San Francisco, and we talked about this. This subject is hot on their plates, you know, the super mm -hmm. geniuses. Yep. And... Uh, and they gave us, they gave me $12 million for the campaign, which, Whoa. you know, four years ago, they probably wouldn't have. We had thousands of people on the streets. You saw it. It just happened this last weekend. Yep. I met with incredible people, actually. And this is their big, this is what everyone's talking about with all of the technology. These are the real technology people. They're talking about AI. And they showed me things, but I've seen things that are so, you wouldn't even think it's possible. But... In terms of copycat, now, to a lesser extent, they can make a commercial. I saw this. Yeah. They made a commercial, me promoting a product, and it wasn't me. And I said, did I make that commercial? <laughs> <laughs> did I forget that I made that commercial? Yeah, that's the stuff that I think is, I see a lot of those. I see a lot of fake commercials, and I'm like, there's no way so-and-so is doing this commercial. Commercial? It is so unbelievable. So it brings with it difficulty, but... We have to be at the forefront. It's going to happen. And if it's going to happen, we have to take the lead over China. China is the primary mm. threat in terms of that. And you know what they need more than anything else is electricity. They have to have electricity, massive amounts of electricity. I don't know if you know that. In order to do these, essentially, it's a plant. Mm. And the electricity needs are greater than anything we've ever needed before to do AI at the highest level. And China will produce it because they'll do whatever you have to do, whereas we have environmental impact people and you know we have a lot of people trying to hold us back. But uh, massive amounts of electricity are needed in order to do AI. And we're gonna have to generate a whole different level of uh, energy and we can do it and I think we should do it, but we have to be very careful with it. Right? We have to watch it. I, I, I wanna respect the time. Uh, I'd like to grab a couple of photos, shoot this TikTok. Absolutely. 120 million views on the way. Absolutely. Um, but thank you for joining us on Impulsive, Mr. President. It's an honor to be with you. You guys are great. This yeah, is so much. Yeah, and good luck with your book over here. That's, uh, that's important stuff. That's thank you so much. an incredible job you did to get out of it, right? If you're ever uh, bored on a plane to Tuscaloosa or something, you want to give it a oh, read. Oh, I'm going to be reading it. <laughs> I, I think it's, a, it's such an important subject. One of the most important subjects, actually. It's great that True. you did it. Thank Ladies you Ladies so and gentlemen, thank you for watching this episode of Impulsive. With Donald Trump, Mr. President, we love you. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time. Take it easy. Peace. Wow.
Wow. Nice. Good job, fellas. Huh? Good. Oh, they're going to get big ratings in the show. Oh, that was so good. I'm such a hater, but it was good. It was good. Yeah, Logan and Mike did good. Mike does good at being a wingman. He's he's always been a good wingman, you know. To the comment earlier who said, you know, you're talking about playing games and, you know, how to play games and how do these games. Ultimately, we really do pick and choose our own games. And I think you should pick the one that you're strongest at. I would not be strong at this game. I'm very bad. You see the way I eye roll and I make facial expressions? Like, I could never sit there in that conversation and not roll my eyes. Like, I'm very... I have a lot of expression. Like I would not thrive at this game. Pick the game that makes sense for you in everything you do. Even if you're married and you want to pick a game as a family, pick that game and pick it well. Logan was always, I think, destined in a big way to be this person to interview Trump. And there was a reason, again, that Trump picks the Nelk boys and his team picks Logan and maybe not somebody else. It was funny. I remember seeing Fresh and Fit say, we want to be as big as Joe Rogan. You could never be as big as Joe Rogan because you're not, one, smart enough. Two, you're not good enough. Joe Rogan isn't as cruel of a person as like Fresh and Fit are. Even Logan isn't as cruel as Fresh and Fit. I don't know if Fresh and Fit know how cruel they come across to normal people. They come across very offensive. Like normies might have problems with Joe Rogan. And yet Joe Rogan is Joe Rogan because he's not cruel He's not incredibly just belittling to all people. Joe Rogan is a dad girl too. He's a girl dad. Joe Rogan uplifts his wife and his daughters while Fresh and Fit could never even imagine, right? Fresh and Fit, Myron wrote a book about why women deserve less. Joe Rogan would never do that. So Joe Rogan might be conspiracy theory adjacent, but he's not telling your mom to suck a dick. And that's the difference. People really care about their mamas. So hello, you know, Logan too. Same with Logan. Logan might be adjacent to, you know, bubbles that we don't like, but he's not overly cruel to people. He uplifts his mother. He like promotes his parents. He's a family guy. He loves his brother. I don't even know if Myron has a family. I don't even know who Myron's family is. So again, I don't think Fresh and Fit have any idea of how unlikable they are to a large crowd. They're so unlikable, especially, it's, you know, just compare them to Logan Paul. Logan Paul is so likable in comparison, regardless of how much people don't like him. He's incredibly likable. Dun, 